I've attempted to film this so many times this morning, I've had to stop for a croissant. Hello, my name is Millie Boyce. I am a long distance trail runner and Salomon ambassador. I've just moved from five years in Switzerland back to the UK and I thought I'd share with you some of my adventures and things that I have got up to and the experiences I've had running in Switzerland, as well as tips, tricks, reviews, all that kind of stuff, anything to do with running now that I'm back in the UK. So stick around and let's spend some time talking about trail stuff. <music> about this shoe, the Ultra Glide 2. This is quite a new shoe for Salomon. It's come out, I believe it's this year, and it's got some great colorway going on there, which we'll talk about in a minute. I want to talk about this shoe because people come to me and say, why should I spend that amount of money on a shoe? What, what about that shoe in comparison to another shoe? Which one should I go for? So hopefully I can share a little bit of information today as to why you might want to choose this shoe. First impression of the shoe. It looks really nice. Those are my flowers in the back there. It, it's got great colourway. Um, sometimes trail shoes can be like a little bit garish, but I'm really impressed with the look of these shoes. They look really nice. Great, jazzy uh, sole there. And uh, we're going to focus a little bit on the sole to begin with. So the sole of the shoe is obviously going to tell you quite a lot about the type of terrain that you are going to be running on. And what stands out immediately here with this shoe is obviously quite a thick sole. So we've got here what's called a reverse camber rocker. And what that does is when you are landing the foot, it's giving a nice little bit of feedback so that you're able to have quite a balanced momentum while you are running. The energy foam here is nice and spongy to give you that just protection when you are looking at running a little bit further. Now, this is quite surprising for those of you that know your stuff to do with shoes. The heel drop, which is the difference between the back of the shoe and the front of the shoe, is surprisingly quite a lot for a shoe which looks like it's got a fairly consistently flat profile. So the actual difference in the heel drop is six millimetres, which is actually quite considerable for a shoe of this particular profile. What that means is with a slightly higher heel stack to the front of the shoe, the forefoot, um, you've got a little bit more arch support in the shoe. The shoes, I'm kind of conscious not to show you how dirty they are. <laughs> um, we have here um, 3.5 millimetre lug depth. So contra grip sole, that is defining of Salomon. It gives a nice, um, because you've got this um, quite close together lugs, enable you to uh, get some nice grip on the trail so you're not feeling nervous if you're going through different types of terrain. With a 3.5 millimetre lug depth, you've got some quite considerable protection. That's the depth of the little grips here. Enables you to kind of cling onto the ground, but also not so much that if you end up on some flatter ground or you end up on some road sections, it doesn't feel like you're in football boots. Got a nice, again, nice look to the shoe. We've got this quick lace system. For those of you that don't know what quick lace system is, it just saves having to worry about uh, using laces. It just here has a little toggle that then slides up and enables you to, because of this handy pocket, very effectively get those laces out the way without having to worry about your shoes coming undone. Personally, for me, I've never liked traditional laces. My laces were always coming undone, whether it was on the treadmill or on the trail, and this just lasts. I've never actually had a problem with them breaking or anything like that, no matter how long I've gone for a run or how long I've worn the trainers for. So quick lace system is brilliant with these and are a bit of a defining feature of many of the Salomon shoes. The upper here has got a nice meshy material here. And what that enables is for when you're on the trail and you're going through those puddles, it's going to dry really quickly. Here's a little bit of a tip from me. Um, Gore-Tex shoes are very popular. Salomon also do some Gore-Tex shoes. Many of the brands do. I think personally, and especially for Salomon shoes, this kind of material means that they dry really quickly. So Gore-Tex is great if you know you're gonna be out in the elements very consistently. You do want that extra protection, especially for a longer race, for example, or that you're really putting in lots of miles in training. But for an everyday training shoe, this kind of material enables really quick drying. So you go through a puddle, before you know it, your shoe is nice and dry again. 
um, certainly drier than it was. So it's definitely something that allows your shoe to be a bit more breathable as well while you are running. I'm gonna put some footage now in of me on a run and talking a little bit about the shoe in action, uh, to tell you what I think about it while on the trail. So you can see why people choose the old July 2 as a great training shoe, a really nice spongy sole, nice proprioception for running. Conditions are pretty dry at the moment. Um, it might be a bit softer as I head more in this direction on the cliffs. Um, so we'll see how it fares if we need to use a bit more grip. But it does have some lugs, so I mean it's it's a kind of multi-purpose shoe. It's very comfortable. Um, the fit is slightly narrower. I do have wider feet, but it's a uh, it's a pretty good shoe. You can see why people rave about it. I certainly enjoy running in it. Um, today, a little bit of small ascent and descent. Um, it's very comfy. You can feel that nice spongy sole but I've still got good proprioception. Uh, the ground is quite dry at the moment. Yeah, it's a little bit softer here, though. it's still pretty good. It gets so boggy around here in winter. Um, so it's hard to test it today, maybe on the muddiest of conditions, but on steps, um, it's been fine. And uh, I can move quite confidently. So uh, yeah, I can see why this is such a popular shoe and uh, great for long distance training and shorter ones too, actually. Now this is also something where I wanted to talk about what shoes are made for. So the Ultra Glide 2 is made for mid to longer distance because of the cushioning. That does not mean that if you are somebody doing shorter distances, you could not benefit from this shoe. It's all about your preference. So for me, the cushioning, is a great thing whether I'm doing a short distance or a longer distance I'm going to be looking for that little bit of extra protection on my feet so the cushioning is actually something that I really like if you're somebody who prefers a much um, thinner flatter sole um, this might not be your first choice you might want to go for something a bit more like the sense ride uh, 5 for example which has less of a, less of a spongy bottom of the shoe but it enables you to maybe feel the ground just that little bit more. Of course, that means you're not gonna have quite so much of that cushioning protection. So it really depends on what you're looking for. In terms of the weight of the shoe, 278 grams. That's not bad, actually. That's pretty light, considering um, you've got quite a spongy, thick sole. It's certainly pretty lightweight uh, to carry, not only in your bag, if you're going towards the trail, but also on your feet. So any negatives, anything with the shoe that you might wanna take into consideration? One might be price point, it's quite expensive. The way I tend to look at buying shoes is for trail running, you want to have something that's gonna last. As a sport, trail running is less expensive overall than something like mountain biking, climbing, skiing. You don't have to have considerable large bits of equipment. You just need something on your feet, really. Um, and so, your trainers are probably going to be, your trail shoes are the most important thing that you buy, arguably. Now, you want something that's going to last. You don't want to have a shoe, especially if you're trained towards something, that's going to fall apart after a couple of weeks or months. The cost per wear, if you're getting out three or more times a week, is actually going to be quite a good investment uh, because these are going to be the type of shoes that are going to last. These are built specifically, the Ultra Glide 2, for mid to longer distance. So they need to be able to be pretty hard wearing for that. In terms of the fit of the shoe, now I have um, quite a wide foot and quite a flat foot. These are, as Salomon shoes quite often can be, a little bit more narrow. However, um, I find these very comfortable with my wide foot. Uh, part of that is also because there's so much cushioning. So I've not had any problems with the width of this shoe. It's not my ultimate favourite shoe. I have one specific one, which maybe I'll reveal in a different video, which is definitely my ultimate favourite. But that might come as a surprise to some people that are trail runners, because it's not a shoe necessarily that everybody does love in trail running. I'll have to reveal this in a different video. And that really is the point I'd want to make overall. You need to go for what feels good for you. When you try on a shoe, it needs to be something that intuitively feels great for you and your foot. I'm actually going to link in a video here that I've done for Salomon in the past about when to try on a shoe, what to think about when you're buying your trail running shoes. Hopefully that can be a little bit helpful for you. So overall, 
I think this is a good investment shoe, great for mid to long distance, also a shorter distance if you prefer a shoe with a lot more cushioning. A little bit of a heel drop there, which might be a bit of a surprise to some people, considering it's got such a thick sole, but a great one for those people that are deciding to train for something a little bit longer distance. Great this time of year as well as the conditions are changing because you've got that lug depth, which will just handle a little bit more changing environments as well as being okay on the road. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. I would love to be able to share with you some more uh, hints, tips, adventures, all that kind of stuff uh, as I continue my training back in the UK. So do pop in the comments anything that you'd like me to cover in future videos. I'll also be doing monthly vlogs as well, shortly about to head to Greece. So I look forward to being able to share a little bit of that with you. And apart from that, I will see you in the next video.